Ah, uh, we. This is Extra Factors, issue number 51. It has not got the greatest or the most compelling cover. It is Wingman, and he has been chased by policemen helicopters. But I have said I have a real soft spot for this period. Pretty much just because they are the ones that I bought. This is the last stretch of the Lewis Simons run. Her final issue is 63 or 64. And then there is a few shite issues by Christopher Claravoyant. Before David Peter takes out of the book. My tip is to avoid the Claravoyant ones. We start off and we are introduced to a new character. A down on his look mutie called Moel, who is, for some reason, in a lot of the 90s cartoon. Uh, usually just in the background as like a background character, but he is technically in a lot of the episodes. Him and his mate are walking down an alleyway and they are attacked by Sabreclaw, who is still ganning around and killing random muties. And Moel's mate, who is bizarrely identical to Beak. He straight away gets killed by Sabreclaw and Maul, he manages to escape. Uh, that is Maul there. And he runs off and Sabreclaw is like, where did Maul go? And he swears to catch him. And then we have this whole vignette being observed by Armageddon and his loyal hound Calabac. Uh, Calabac, he became Armageddon's slave in exchange for enhanced strength and power. Because he wanted revenge against all the murderers who slaughtered a bunch of innocent muties in the Muty Mascara storyline. And Sabreclaw, he was one of them. And we have got some fantastic stuff with Calabac and Armageddon. Calabac, he wants to go and beat up Sabreclaw, but Armageddon forbids it. Just really good character stuff. And then Moel... He has been stalked by Sabreclaw and Maul, he uses his mutant power of looking weird to gan through a wall. And Sabreclaw just cannot fathom what is ganning on. Then we catch up with the excellent men, the book stars. We have got Snowman, the Smurf, Cyclist, the Whore and Wingman. And to be completely honest, they are the least interesting thing in this issue. They are coming back from a big adventure in space that I have not read. And their spaceship and headquarters, it lands in the middle of New York and it causes a right fuss. But then we cut away to a record shop. Record shops were a thing back in the day when people listened to music before it was all streamable. Moel, he is hiding in the basement of the shop and we are introduced to this girl here. She is called Trisha Tanaka. Uh, she's not normally upside down. This is a new character and she will go on to be Snowman's girlfriend. But right here we are doing a cute plot with her and Moel. She works at the record shop and she finds Moel living in the basement. But before we get any more of this... We have got another scene with Armageddon and Calabac. Calabac, he is trying to prove himself to his master and prove that he is strong enough to face Sabreclaw. But Armageddon, he still won't let Calabac go and fight Sabreclaw. So back at the record shop, uh, Trisha's boss is a knobhead. And even back in 1990, white men with blonde hair were a problem. Trisha, she is afraid that she will lose her job if she lets Moel stay. And we cut back to the excellent men. And now some people get really annoyed when I call them the excellent men. When it is technically extra factors. But shut up. This is the excellent men. None of that clairvoyantian garbage. There is some forced conflict here between them and the policemen. And wingman... He saves a policewoman, officer man. And this is how we are also introduced to a new love interest for Wingman. Uh, this is the first appearance of both Ur and Trisha Tanaka. Uh, very unusual that they were both introduced in the same issue. 
this police woman officer man she probably has one of them afro american names like denise or shaniqua she is a cop and this is great because she's kind of just a normal person she's just a woman working in new york city she is completely normal but then Christopher Clairvoyant, he reveals she is a member of an ancient species known as Spikes. And then she also becomes a mutie. And her mutie power is that she is a big insect queen. And then back with Trisha, she eventually decides to just let Mole stay because she feels proper sorry for him. So he starts living under the stairs in the shop. And Trisha... She'll try and keep them hidden from her boss. Uh, this is good as well because Trisha, she's just a normal person. She's just a woman working in New York City. Like, she is proper normal. And then Christopher Caravoyan, in his first issue on this book, he reveals that she is linked to Japanese ninjas because Christopher Caravoyan, he thinks all Oriental characters must be samurais and obsessed with honour. <laughs> the daft racist prick. And given Wingman a love interest, this also helps explore the character a bit more. He has been kind of locked in this grim dark persona after he was transformed into a jockey by Armageddon. And we still have a lot of stuff about that, like his short temper. Uh, like here, where he gets really annoyed with all the newsmen and he lashes out with his metal wings and like breaks all their cameras. Uh, we do a lot of stuff with Wingman in this run and exploring his inner darkness and if he can ever love a woman. Uh, Sabreclaw, he sees Wingman and he must have just gotten bored of trying to track down Mole. Because he decides he's now going to kill Wingman for no particular reason. And we end the story with Calabac again. And he decides to disobey Armageddon and teleport himself away to go after Sabreclaw. But right, here's the thing. That was Armageddon's plan all along. He wanted Calabac to finally take the initiative himself. And that, that was like Armageddon's final test. And Calabac, he passed it. Next issue is Wingman vs. Sabreclaw. And it has got a cover by Robert Lee Fieldman. Oh dear. This was Extra Factors 51. And I didn't hear many people at all praising this era of the book. The whole Sabreclaw, Mole, Master Mold, Gothic Dracula Club period. Probably because even I admit it is not the high point of this run at all. But I do have a proper fondness for these stories. It's nice to step back every now and again and not have a comic be propelled by major storylines or big crossovers. The world doesn't always have to be ending. And there's still some great character writing going on. The stuff with Armageddon and Calabac. And I enjoy the Mole and Sabreclaw story. I rate this one 7 thumbs up.